Hey Finksters, now today we will be discussing a Google interview question to find the peak element in a given array. Now let's try and understand what the question asks us to do. You will be given an integer array and you have to find the peak element and return the index of that peak element. If the array contains multiple peaks, you have to return index of any of the peak element. Now what is a peak element? A peak element is an element that is strictly greater than all its neighbors. So that's it about the problem statement. Let's go ahead and let's try and understand this with the help of a few examples. So let's have a look at the first example wherein the given array consists of the following integers 1, 2, 3 and 1. Now what's the largest integer among all these numbers? It's 3, right? It's 3. Now indexing in Python starts from 0. So 1 here is at the 0th index, 2 is at the first index, while 3 is at the second index. Hence, the output of this input should be 2, since 3, which is the peak element, is present at the second index. Now let's have a look at another example. In this case, the array consists of the following integers 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6 and 4. Now please note that there is a subtle difference between the largest element in an array and the peak element in an array. Let's go back to the definition. A peak element is an element that is strictly greater than its neighbors. Now, if we have a look at this array, then in this case, 2 is the largest among its neighbors. So what are the neighbors of 2? They are 1 and 1. While if you move further within the array, you will find that the number 6 is greater than its neighbors as well, which is 5 and 4. Hence, you can either return the index of 2 or you can also return the index of 6 in this case. So, what's the index of 2? It is 1 or you can also return the index of 6 which is 5. So, this should not be 2, it should be 5. Now, let's move ahead to the next example. As you can see that this array consists of the integers which are same. Now, in this case, you can return any index as all the elements are same. Hence, every element can be considered as the peak element. So you can either return 0, 1 or 2. So I hope you understood the difference between the largest element in an array and the peak element in an array. Now having said that, the largest element in an array will also be the peak element since it is definitely greater than all its neighbors. So now that we have an idea about the peak element and the problem given to us, let us go ahead and find out how we can solve this problem. Now the best way to dissect an algorithm is to understand it with the help of an example. And that's what we are going to do to understand this algorithm. And then we will dive into pie chart and implement a few examples on our algorithm to check if this works. Now this algorithm is an implementation of binary search and as all of us know that binary search works upon the concept of an upper limit, a lower limit using which we find a mid value and that mid value helps us to reach the final output and that is exactly what we are going to do in this case as well. Here the upper limit is marked by a pointer known as right while the lower limit will be marked by the pointer left. Now you can use any other name. In this case, I have used left and right. And now the upper limit and the lower limit will help me to find the mid value. And the mid value is found by simply adding up the left and the right values or the values marked by the left and the right pointers and then dividing the sum by two. Now note that this is an integer division. Once we find the mid value, we then have to play around with it to reach the final output. That is to derive the peak element. So let's go ahead and let's have a look at these conditions. And then we will take the help of an example to understand how those conditions work upon that example and how we can derive the peak element from that example. Okay, so these are the conditions. We simply go ahead and return the value of mid as the answer if this condition is satisfied. While if this condition is not satisfied, we then check for these conditions wherein we either modify the value of the right pointer or we modify the value pointed by the left pointer. 
Now, this does not make sense until and unless we go ahead and have a look at the example. So let's have a look at this example. Now, before we begin dissecting our example, let me notify you that the left pointer is denoted by the green marker while the right pointer is denoted by the blue marker. Similarly, the orange marker denotes the mid value or the value pointed by the mid pointer. Okay, so these are the major parameters which will help us to deduce the output. And so let's note them down and let's find out what happens in each iteration. So we have our left value, then we have our right value, and finally we have the mid value. Initially, the value pointed by the left pointer is zero. That is the starting index. So left points at the starting index initially, while right points at the end index, which is six in this case. So what is six? Six is equal to n minus one, wherein n is the length of the given array. So in this case, the length of the given array is seven. So we simply go ahead and subtract one from seven, which is equal to six. And six now is the value pointed by the right pointer initially, while left in all cases will always begin at the zeroth index. So having said that, we now know that the value of left is zero initially, while the value of right is six. And now it's time to compute the mid value. But before computing the mid value, we have to check is the value of left less than or equal to the value of right? And yes, definitely the value of left is less than the value of right. Hence, we can move inside the while loop and then it's time to check the three conditions that we have at our disposal. So let's go ahead and check the first condition. Is the value of mid equal to zero? No, it isn't. But please note that this is not the only condition that we have to check before returning mid. We also have to check if the value of mid is equal to n minus 1. And to check that, we first have to find the value of mid. So what is mid in the first iteration? To find the value of mid, we simply have to go ahead and add the values pointed by left and right pointers, which are 0 and 6. So we add 0 and 6 and then divide it by 2. So what is 6 divided by 2? It is 3. So now mid at this point of time or in the first iteration points at the third index. Therefore, we check is mid equal to 0? No, it isn't because it is 3. So this condition is not satisfied. Then we go, again go ahead and check is mid equal to n minus 1? And if you have a look, no, mid is not equal to n minus 1 as n minus 1 is 6, whereas mid is 3. So this condition is not satisfied in the first case. Therefore, we can safely disregard it. It's time to move on to the next conditions, wherein we check is the value of mid equal to 0? No, it isn't. But once again, we have to check another condition, wherein we have to check if the value at the index given by mid minus 1 is greater than the value at the mid. So what is the value at the index mid minus 1? So what is mid minus 1 in this case? It is 3 minus 1, which is 2. So what is the value at the second index? It is 1. So is 1 greater than the value at mid index, which is 3? No, it isn't. So this condition is also not satisfied. Hence, we simply go ahead and shift the left pointer towards the right. Yes, we will be shifting the left pointer in this case towards the right. This is how this algorithm will work. We will either shift the left pointer towards the right or we will be shifting the right pointer towards the left. And finally, with the help of the values pointed by the left and the right pointer, we will finally reach a mid value which will actually help us to find the peak element. Now, having said that, we simply go ahead and say that the value now pointed by the left pointer will be equal to mid plus 1. So what is mid plus 1? Mid plus 1 is 4. Hence, the left pointer will now point at the fourth index. Now, before proceeding to the next iteration, I just want to make a slight rectification in these conditions. This will not be OR. Instead, it will be AND. So both these conditions have to be true 
in order to return the value of mid as the final output. Okay, now we have shifted the left pointer towards the right and this is the value of the left pointer at this point of time. Hence left now points at the fourth index while right is still at the sixth index. We then go ahead and check is the value of left less than or equal to the value of right. Yes, definitely the value of left is less than the value of right. So we have to find the value of mid once again. And what will be mid in this case? It will simply be 4 plus 6 and then we divide that with 2. So that is 10 divided by 2 which is equal to 5. And mid now points at the fifth index. It's now time to check the three conditions that we have at our disposal. So now we check is the value of mid equal to 0? No it isn't. But then again we have to check is the value at the index given by mid minus 1 is less than or equal to the value pointed by the mid pointer. So what is the value at the index given by mid minus 1? So if mid at this point of time is 5, mid minus 1 will be 5 minus 1 which is 4. So this right here is mid minus 1 which is 4. So we simply have to check is 4 less than 5 and yes it indeed is less than 5. Okay so the first condition is satisfied but please make a note that we also have to check for another condition wherein we have to check is mid equal to n minus 1. So what is n minus 1? Now n in this case as I mentioned is 7 which is the length of the array. So n minus 1 is going to be 7 minus 1 which is 6. So is mid equal to 6? No that's not true. Mid now is 5. Now please note that the value pointed by mid is 6. However the value stored within mid is 5. This means that mid stores the index. It does not store the value. Therefore 5 is definitely less than 6. Hence this condition right here is not satisfied. However, we again have another option. If this option is true, then we can safely say that yes, we have reached the final output. So let's go ahead and check that. We check if the value at the mid index. So what is the value at the mid index? The value at the mid index is 6. We do not have much space left here. So let's go ahead and clear the screen now to understand this. So we now have to check what is the value at the mid index. And the value at the mid index as you can see is 6. So that is 6. And now we have to check is this value greater than the value at the index pointed by mid plus 1. So what is the value pointed by the index mid plus 1? In the first place what is the index given by mid plus 1? If mid is 5 then the value pointed by the index mid plus 1 is going to be 6. That is 5 plus 1. And what is the value at the sixth index? It is 4. So is 6 greater than or equal to 4? Yes, it is. Hence, the second condition is also satisfied. So this means both the conditions which have to be true for us to return the output are true. That means we have finally derived our output. And what is that output? That output is given by the mid index. What is the value at the mid index? It is 5. And even if you look manually, you will find that yes, 6 indeed is the peak element in this given array. And where is 6? 6 is at the fifth index. So we simply have to go ahead and return the index of the peak element, which is 5. So that's how this algorithm works. Now, just to summarize things, we have two pointers, which are left and right. We either shift the left pointer towards the right or we shift the right pointer towards the left to find a mid value. Now this mid value will help us to reach the final output based on the three conditions that you can see on the screen. So this condition right here that is the first condition will help you to reach the final output while the second condition helps us to modify the value of the right pointer using which we shift the right pointer towards the left while this condition right here which is executed when none of the other conditions are executed and in this case we simply go ahead and shift the left pointer towards the right. 
So this is how this algorithm works. Now let's go ahead and implement this algorithm in PyCharm in the form of a code and let's find out if this works. So peak underscore element is the function which will help us to find the peak element. Our first task is to go ahead and find the length of the given array. It's now time to initialize the left and the right pointer. So as I mentioned while explaining, the left pointer will always point at the 0th index initially and the right pointer will always point at the last index initially. Now what is the last index? The last index is given by n minus 1. Now it's time to begin our while loop which will help us to iterate through the elements within the array and shift the left and right pointers accordingly to find the mid value. Okay, now let's move inside the while loop. We now need to calculate the value of the mid variable and that is given by left plus right divided by 2. Please note that this right here is an integer division. It's now time to play around with the mid variable and use the three conditions that we learned previously to find the final output. So what were the three conditions? This was the first condition. And when this condition was true, we simply returned the value of mid. If this condition was not true, then we moved inside this condition wherein we modified the value of the right pointer. But what happens here is we are simply shifting the right pointer towards the left. I hope you remember this as I already mentioned this while explaining the example previously. And if these conditions do not satisfy, in that case, we move inside the else block and we modify the value of the left pointer such that the left pointer is equal to mid plus one. This also means that we are shifting the left pointer towards the right. So that's it. This is exactly all that you have to do in order to reach the final output or in order to find the peak element. Now let's go ahead and check this out with the help of a few examples and let's find out if this works. So the test cases that will help us to reach the final output are as follows. Okay, we have the test cases. Now let's go ahead and execute this piece of code to find out if this is working. Okay, there we go. Now let's verify. In the first case, the output should have been 2 and that's what we got. In the second case, it should be 5 and 5 it is. In the third example, the output should have been 4 and 4 is what we got. In the fifth case, the output should have been 0 since 20 is the largest among its neighbors. So 0 is the output that we got. And finally, the output should have been anything which could be 0, 1 or 2. Hence, in this case, the output that we got is 1. That's great. This means our algorithm is working perfectly fine. And now, if you remember, we were also given a challenge wherein the interviewer asked us to solve this question with a time complexity of log n. Let's have a look. There we go. As you can see, that the challenge given to us is, can you write an algorithm that runs in log n time complexity? Now, strictly speaking, this is a binary search algorithm implementation and this algorithm therefore takes approximately a time complexity of log n. Hence this brings us to the end of this interview question and I hope you can successfully solve it. So that's it for this lecture. Please join me in the next lecture wherein we will be discussing another interview question. Thank you.